From Broadway to the big screen, the timeless music of ABBA makes its way back to the strip in a classic musical. From the backwoods of Louisiana, Uncle Larry teaches me some things about crawfish and some beauties that aren't afraid of water. The brand new season of Front Row Center starts right now. Everyone, I'm Honey Love, and welcome back to a brand new season of Front Row Center. Did you miss us? Because we missed you. I want to welcome my new co-host, Zach Fuentes. Hey, honey. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for joining us this season. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be part of Front Row Center. Las Vegas has so much in terms of the arts and entertainment music community. I'm happy to be here and help showcase that with you and the rest of the team here at Front Row Center. And we're happy to have you. So happy to be here in Vegas. Summertime. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to do in the summer? Uh, lounging by the pool, shopping. You know, I got to get my tan on, of course. Mm, I like that. Well, you had me at the pool. Okay. <laughs> you had me at the pool. And tonight, we're going to be diving in with a group of synchronized swimmers called the Water Beauties. Mm. Yeah, really great group. And their name fits them, trust me. Nakaya Berry kicks off the season with this story, and she's going to show us why. Let's see. Just when Vegas thinks it couldn't get any hotter, the water beauties can bring the heat even more to any event by performing high-level synchronized swimming. If you think about Vegas, you think about pool parties, and you think about concerts around pools, and you think about warm summer nights, and usually the pool is empty. So the water beauties bring a really unique aspect to everybody's parties. The water beauties can perform at any private or corporate events. The water entertainment can include ambiance, swimming, mermaids, choreograph routines to the client's music of choice, or provide a centerpiece in the middle of the pool for musicians and other acts. It's the perfect tie of entertainment and water and pools, which is Vegas. <laughs> we recently did an event where they filled the pool with ping pong balls and then the girls had fountains out of their head. So we work with props, we work with different things in the pool, we work with different types of pools. The synchronized swimmers have a number of international and national achievements, including 16 Olympians and 44 U.S. national champion titles. Many of them already live in Vegas performing in shows on the Strip. We have the largest contingency of Olympians out of any performing group in all of Nevada. We're just a group of synchronized swimmers who are the perfect combination of world-class athletes and performers. We wanted to project something that really showcases synchronized swimming as an upcoming sport and very entertaining aspect around any pool in Las Vegas and around the world. Since their start in 2012, the Water Beauties did underwater swimwear modeling and photography, commercials, and live or taped performances. They also were featured on the cover of Playboy for its 2013 July and August edition. So we had all of our girls um, shaping out the Playboy bunny, which was huge because most models work a lifetime to get featured on the cover of Playboy and we got that. We've done quite a few corporate events and we have a lot of exciting things in the works as well. We can basically create anything to the client's request. These clients can come to us and ask for something that no one else can get. If you're interested in booking Water Beauties for your next event, you can contact them at waterbeauties.com. Reporting for Front Row Center, I'm Nakaya Berry. After graduating from UNLV last May, our first guest made his way to the Big Apple in hopes of making it on Broadway. But as luck would have it, he ended up right back here in Vegas as part of the cast for Mamma Mia. Please welcome to the show, Jordan Bondurant. Hi, Jordan. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So after graduation, you went to New York. What was that like for you? It was pretty hectic. Uh, my roommate and I, uh, he was actually another UNLV graduate. Mm -hmm. His name is Alan Dronick. We packed up a U-Haul van. We drove 2,000 miles across the country. We got a place in New York, packed everything in, and then six months later, first job I booked, right back in Vegas. So I guess sometimes that's kind of how show business yeah. goes. Yeah, <laughs> so you were there for six months. Yes. And what kind of things did you endure when you were there? <laughs> Apart from the intense weather, uh, you know, I met a lot of good people. Uh, I made a lot of great contacts. I signed with an agency up there mm -hmm. and uh, did a few readings and a few workshops of new musicals and uh, tried to have fun 
on a budget. <laughs> yeah, it's very expensive to live out there. That's a lesson I had to learn the hard way. Um, but it was great. I really enjoyed my time. Uh, I really miss Las Vegas, so it's kind of good to be home. I wish I wasn't coming back in May when it's so... <laughs> it's so hot. Oh, well, now June or July or whenever yeah. they watch this. <laughs> so you're the newbie on Mamma Mia, right? I know that some of the cast members have been in previous productions of Mamma Mia. What's it been like for you? You know, it's been great. Um, I had a, an opportunity to possibly join another cast. And, you know, sometimes when you're a put-in in a show, there's not that same feeling of newness and freshness mm -hmm. when you're putting on a new production. So what was great about this is that there are people who have done the show before. Sean Krill has been in it before. Christine Sherrill has been in it before. Uh, they're two of the other principals. But for the majority, most of us were brand new to Mamma Mia. So what was great is that there was a whole rehearsal process. So we all kind of came into it fresh. Right. As opposed to, you know, like <sighs> jaded old actors who'd been doing it for 20 years. Uh, so it was a really great experience. Did, did you, was there any hazing or anything done by <laughs> some nothing of them? Nothing we can talk about on camera. <laughs> Come on, Jordan. No, no, no. no any pranks <laughs> or anything that they played on you? Um... Well, I have to be in a Speedo in the show, so I mean, that's like a prank every single night. Oh, now we definitely have to go see yeah, it just right. to see you in a Speedo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get your tickets now, <laughs> please. Um, but no, uh, the musical theater crowd is not a hard hazing community, okay, so good we're all right. <laughs> so tell us about your character. You play Sky, right? Yeah, Sky, uh, he is the, the main character, Sophie's fiance. Mm -hmm. He's an American who was a stockbroker and just kind of got fed up with that life and was traveling across Europe and met this beautiful girl in Greece and was like, this will work. This is what I'll do. So he packed it up and is getting married. Yeah. What is your favorite ABBA song from Mamma Mia? Oh my gosh. That's, that's a tough question because favorite is different than the one that gets stuck in my head the most. Which one gets stuck in your head the most? <laughs> um, there's a song called Waterloo, mm -hmm. which gets stuck in my head every single day. Annoyingly. Um, <laughs> it's hard to go to sleep at night because oh, it keeps playing over and over. They say that like the trick is to listen to the song if it's stuck in your head, but that has not been the case. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, so yeah, Waterloo's great. I mean, Dancing Queen is great. That's, that's so, one of my favorite songs right there, Dancing Queen. Yeah. Just I makes you want to dance. I know, I know. Well, come see the show. You can hop up on your I feet sure and join will, us. I sure will, now that you've invited me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you, Jordan, for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. And good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you so much. All right, you can see Jordan and the rest of the Mamma Mia cast Sunday through Thursday at 7.30 p.m. and on Saturday at 5.30 and 9 p.m. inside the Tropicana. Later on in the show... Got something on your mind? Well, Zach sits down with a local who gives you the chance to let it out. And next, the swamp meets Sin City. Stick around, Front Row Center will be right back. Welcome back to Front Row Center. One of the things I love to do is try new things. And we have a lot of food events here in Vegas that give us the opportunity to sample some great dishes. One of the biggest, the annual Crawfish Festival. But before you dig in and enjoy that Southern delicacy, you have to learn how to eat it right. Let's check back in with Honey, who went on a mission to learn how to eat crawfish the proper way. The second annual Straight from the Bayou Crawfish Festival took place at the Las Vegas Sports Center. As the robust smell of Cajun cooking filled the air, attendees indulged in dishes like jambalaya, crawfish etouffee, and a southern tradition known as a crawfish boil. This is awesome today. I feel like home, like it's all the smells and snowballs and the music. Yeah. The crawfish is very uh, spicy, but I like it. They're very spicy. Louisiana leads the nation, producing about 90% of the crawfish harvested in the U.S., so in order to supply fresh live crawfish for the festival, Petrie's Boiling Point drove about 28 hours from Opelousas, Louisiana with live crawfish so that Nevadans could get a taste of this southern treat. We boil it, so the season, and we'll put just a light on the outside, but the majority of the season it is inside the head and inside the tail. This family-owned and operated business prides themselves on making their customers happy. 
And you, you got to have a good flavor, but the, you know, for Southwest Louisiana people to eat it consistently, you got to do it right. And showing me how to eat a crawfish the right way was Uncle Larry. Okay, so so what do we have to do first? You got to grab it like this. You got to okay. pull the tail out like that. You got to. So you suck the head out first. Yeah, and then you peel like this. And get that off. Pinch right here. Pull it out. Pull this out. And then you eat it here. <laughs> I almost bit his finger off. All right, everyone. Once again, from the Crawfish Festival, Honey Love, here was Uncle Larry for Front Row Center. We're going to eat some more crawfish. <laughs> He has opened for artists like Wu-Tang Clan and Mob Deep and has performed in venues like the House of Blues and Tao Nightclub. His vocal percussion will amaze you. Give it up for JR Beatbox. Hi, Miss Honey. Hi, JR. How are you? Thank you for being here. I'm doing fabulous. Oh God, thank you for having me here. Step up a little. So how did you get started beatboxing? Uh, happened my freshman year of high school. Uh, I met a classmate from LA and he was a troublemaker. Basically, he was basically all the elements of hip hop. I caught on to his beatboxing. He taught me a few things. And over the years, I just taught myself, got into really learning the craft and doing a lot of research, just like any other little kid wanting to get into something like a hobby. How has that um, changed, the style of beatboxing, the modern day beatboxer versus old school beatboxer? Oh, just like revolution, you know, from back in the medieval days when they used to just pound on drums and stuff. It, actually, vocal percussion from the hip hop days to now is very, very advanced. All around the world, it's really global and it's, it's a huge hidden movement that people have no idea what's going on. Yeah, I mean, beatboxing isn't dead, everyone. <laughs> it's still alive. And then you have this, like, speaking of modern day beatboxing, like, what is this? So I wanted to think out of the box. Um, I'm also a visionary, like, I'm, I love, I love creating new things. I have a friend that creates snowboards with LED lights in them. Wow. And he goes by like uh, uh, glow in the snow. And what I did was I kind of just uh, sat back and was watching Hannibal one night. And I was like, oh man, you know it'd be pretty cool to have like feet boxing through a mask, kind of go like Daft Punk or something. Yeah. So I gave him a call and I, I pitched him like, hey man, you gotta check out, I think we should come up with this kind of idea. So I went to his warehouse uh, the following day and we came up with this. It took about three months to make. It's a, a carbon fiber, um, LED lights inside with uh, a wireless input microphone. So I'd be able to be hands-free while I perform. So there is not another one of these in the world like this, right? No, not that I know of. Wow, and I mean, you should get that patented. No, no it's, it's in the works. It definitely is a through process right and now. And so what does this do for you as far as the sound and projection and everything? Uh, really, it doesn't really do, it, it's great. It's like a, some of a chamber. Okay. But other than that, it's very just for looks. You know, just the fact that you can be able to wear a mask and beatbox and be hands-free and just do different and things. And look scary. Nah, I, don't know. <laughs> I should put like a happy face in front or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are your, what are some of your favorite sounds to mimic? Uh, some of my favorite sounds is um, very basic. It's like, <clears throat> That's one of them. Um, <coughs> or, um, That's like the, what is that, the robot? The Transformer. We're going to go Transformers. Transformer. We're gonna go Transformers. Transformer, this, okay. This, this title is Transformers. Um, Let me have, hear the siren. I know you do a siren. Wow. All right, everyone. Well, here he is, JR Beatbox. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is JRP Box. Now, illustrating the mask, I'm not going to technique, show you what I do on the mic. Do. And so rock with me. 
Watch touch it, bring it, pay it, watch it, turn it, leave it, stop format it, clutch it, bring it, boom, watch it, burn it, bleed, stop Ladies and gentlemen, money, 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 J R R R B boss sending out. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All Thanks. right, everyone. You can see JR Beatbox. He'll be performing at the Monte Carlo on June 19th and for the Vans Warp Tour also on June 19th at the UNLV in Romero Fields. For other show dates, make sure you check them out at jrbeatbox.com. After the break, a Las Vegas socialite puts a twist on a mix and mingle. Zach will have more for you right after this. <laughs> when doctors told me I would never walk again, somehow I knew I would. Whether you need support in a tragedy or just to make it through a bad day, prayer can make a difference. America, let's come together by believing with each other. We had been called up for the first time. Wildfires were getting close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the guard is. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Whether you're vocal about it or not, we all have an opinion, and sometimes our anger or frustration can build up. But our next guest gives people around the valley a unique chance to sound off. Here with us today is Jeremy Washington, or Mr. Jeremy, welcome. Thank you. How are you today? So this mixer, mm -hmm. tell us about it. Well, it's a public forum. So it's a public forum where grown adults can mix and mingle with those whom they know and don't know to discuss different topics, whether it be on sex, relationship, politics, church, controversial issues, etc. There are no wrong or right answers. So we can talk about anything there. You can. <laughs> and what separates this from like a Jerry Springer episode or something like this where people sound off and get like a little too inappropriate? Uh, well, the key is that it's grown and sophisticated, oh. mature adults. Okay. Many people don't like to go to clubs, bars, smoking environments. So therefore, it creates you a different opportunity to get out without actually getting out into the secular realm. So what kind of environment is this? What kind of vibe is it? It's, um, it's kind of like a neo-soul. It's chill, mellow. There are some provocative topics that can actually liven up the audience. But it's, yeah. <laughs> How fulfilling has this been for you? Very, very. I started off in my home just as being a cocktail mixer, but more people began to come. And then with topics of current issues that people are facing nowadays, I began to get testimonials as far as what someone else said or hearing five different opinions actually helped them. So therefore, being that I'm able to help someone is very rewarding. And you were talking about some of the things you guys discuss in this mixer here. What have been some of the most heated topics or discussions that you can think of? Um, one, um, well, current issue is um, should marijuana be legalized? Hot topic. Okay, it's a very hot Absolutely. topic, especially with all the issues that we have in America. So you get five different people to answer, and, you know, it sits, it sits back and makes you go, hmm. Well, so do you get in on these opinions? Do you put your opinion in, or do you strictly moderate and stay back and kind of 
keep your opinion to yourself. I try to remain biased. However, with some of these responses, you just cannot. Yeah. <laughs> For instance, what would you do if you caught your mate cheating? You know, that, That's, that yeah. can get very hot and juicy. Absolutely. <laughs> Where do you see this going? Um, actually, I see it as a talk show. So I might be the next Oprah, the next Dr. Phil. You were telling me that before we came in here that you were interested in this. I am. It could really be something and have different people on all the time. And how are the people there? You get different people in all the time. Do they mix well in this mixer? They do. It's people of all walks of life. You mm -hmm. do have to be 21 or older to attend. However, my grandmother even attends. Wow. So she's in her 60s and she still has an opinion. People still have opinions. So it's very diverse as far as even color, creed, size, all the sexuality. It's open and diverse to everyone. So it really truly is an event for everyone. Indeed. Wow. Okay. So I was told, I'm not going to say who told me or anything, but uh -oh. I was told that you have sweet potato pie at this event that is so famous, <laughs> yes. but as famous as a mixer itself. Yes, it's Mr. Jeremy's homemade sweet potato pie. It's fresh, smooth, creamy, no lumps, no shrinks, the buttery crust. Oh my gosh, that's a commercial in itself right there. Indeed. What about a cooking show too? <laughs> uh, no, just pies now. I do TV cook. Take over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when people go to this mixer, again, what can they expect? They can expect freedom of speech. Very they can speech. expect to mix and mingle and actually meet and network with people that they do not know and actually be able to walk away with something. Absolutely. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, on. Kindly. We're so excited to have you on this first episode of the new season. Oh, not Thank a Thank you so much. All right. The next Mr. Jeremy's uh, Twist Social Mixer and Party Topic Party, excuse me, will be August 16th at the Red Label Lounge from 7 to 10 p.m. And now Nakaya Berry wants you to think outside the box and step out with her as she gives you the rundown on what's going on in Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Nakaya Berry. In Vegas, people complain that there isn't anything to do besides the tourist attractions. Actually, there are plenty of activities for locals, but you have to know where to look. I'm going to make that easier for you, Vegas, by sharing with you the events I would go to this week in Stepping Out with Nakaya Berry. On Thursday, June 12th, be open-minded and do something different. That includes checking out a musical. Hey, don't knock it until you try it. The Book of Mormon is a religious satire by South Park creators. Brent Brantley of the New York Times calls it the best musical of this century. Tickets range from $39 to $150. Friday, June 13th, in the midst of graduation season, the Onyx Theater presents The Graduate. Get this. A recent college grad falls in love with his father's business partner's wife, then finds himself falling in love with her daughter. You don't want to miss that confusion. Tickets are $20. The play will also show on Saturday. This weekend, Chelsea is at the Chelsea. For those of you who are Chelsea Handler fans, this is your time to see Chelsea Lately live in Las Vegas. You can check her out Friday at 8 p.m. and Saturday at 6.30 p.m. at the Chelsea in the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Tickets are $85. Saturday, June 14th, Las Vegas' largest reggae festival, Reggae in the Desert, is coming to the Clark County Amphitheater from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tickets are $25 to $30. Sunday, June 15th, the city is putting on a movie night by the pool. You can hang out by the Pavilion Center pool while watching the movie Surf's Up at only $3 a person. This would be great for a family with little ones. Monday, June 16th, the Boulevard Pool at the Cosmopolitan will also show dive-in movies on their big marquee by the pool. You can see Little Giants at 7 p.m. and Friday Night Lights at 9 p.m. Nice environment by the pool, rooftop view of the strip with a classic movie and for free? Can't beat that. Tuesday, June 17th, test your skills with your friends at Trivia Night downtown at the Beat Coffee House from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. This event happens every Tuesday, and there will be a prize for winners. Wednesday, June 18th, Soja, keeping up with the reggae theme, will perform at the Brooklyn Bowl at the Link. Tickets are $27.50. The show begins at 9 p.m. And my movie pick of the week is 22 Jump Street. No, not 21, the sequel to that. 22 Jump Street will be in theaters this Friday with stars Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum returning to their roles as police officers as they go undercover at a local college but begin to question their partnership as one becomes close with friends to a football player and the other enters the bohemian art scene. Sounds like I can get a laugh from this one. Well, that's it for Stepping Out with Nakia Berry. Back to Zach and Honey. So, Zach, how was your first show? Honey, I had an amazing time. 
really, we had some great guests on today from the Beatboxer. We did. Mama Mia, I wanted to go see that show soon. Mr. Jeremy, that social mixer letting us sound off. Yeah. It was amazing, the crawfish story. Look, I have a funny story to tell you about the crawfish. So everyone, I learned how to put a crawfish to sleep. You like take a crawfish, a live crawfish, of course, you flip it over on its back and you blow on it lightly, like, and then it goes to sleep. It's like putting so, a crawfish in a sleeper hole. So you put hole. the crawfish to sleep, Let, blow on it, yes. and then you kill it. And no. then you eat it the right way. No. <laughs> yeah, you I'm can eat it later this. on after you kill it, yeah. But it was so cool. So I, had a, I had a fun time doing that Definitely story. Definitely looked like it. And speaking of eating, Mr. Jeremy Sweet Potato Pie. Yes. You've Are tried you going to get one? Well, I, I was thinking he was going to bring it here today. He should have. You like, booked him. You should have had him come and bring it. I know, here. right? It's so good, though. Wait, I had to write a song about it. It's called Tasty. I'll have to sing it oh, for you at another time. I'll see another front row center <laughs> segment in the future. Honey, love, I'm going to be singing my song <laughs> called Tasty. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, everyone, we hope you enjoyed today's show. We've had a we have amazing season lined up for you. And if you have an event you want featured, Email us here, frontrowcenterlv at gmail.com. Can't wait to hear from you. Or if you have a talent you want to showcase, you can find us on Twitter at FRCLV and hashtag frontrowcenterlv. To check out past episodes, log on to UNLV.TV. And like always, from the entertainment capital of the world, it's, it's Vegas, Vegas baby. baby, and it's all right here on Front Row Center. Good night. <clears throat>